It is I, the great one himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com, on the interwebs. Oh, winded, still on the hike. We're on the way back down. There's some darker clouds rolling in. Oh my God, Uh, what is it? Baby metal, baby metal, baby metal. Go on YouTube and search for the band Baby Metal. I'm just, just watch. And don't get like one of their videos for your first experience. Choose a recording of a live performance. Trust me on this. Baby Metal. Just trust me on this. I was behind in getting out of the house today because I was busy watching them on YouTube and I couldn't stop. All right. I'm still alive. I'm heading back down the trail. Here's two quick things for educational purposes. If you're not a hiker on a regular basis, you may have some misconceptions. Misconception number one that non-hikers have is that going downhill is easier than going uphill. This is absolutely wrong. This is why, too. It's like going uphill, I always meander nice and slow and have a great time. Going downhill always sucks. And I got to cross water again. Hang on. By the way, it is still like sunnier than shit. There's a little dark clouds over in that direction, but it's sunny as hot as hell. And I made it to the trailhead, or sort of. I'll talk about that. Anyway, walking downhill. Hold it. Me getting across the river without getting soaked. Let me let me do this. Can, can I talk and do a river crossing at the same time? I'm going to say no. Ah, yes. All right, made it. If you don't know anything about hiking... You may think that walking downhill is easier than uphill. This is not true. Going downhill takes a lot more effort because you have to work harder to, you have to work controlling your speed going downhill, coupled with the fact that the engineering of the human foot makes it more, more non-ergonomic, if that's a word. It's more non-ergonomic. I'm making words up now. I've never done that before, right? More non-ergonomic, more... Hey, look, more water crossing. Walking downhill. More non-ergonomic than walking uphill. The other misconception you may have is that if you have a backpack, a lot of people who don't know any better think that you want to put the heavy stuff at the bottom. That is also incorrect. When you're loading your backpack, backpack, it's becoming harder for me to talk because I am speed descending the hill, the mountain, and getting winded. Didn't get any windage going up, but coming down, I'm dying. All right, another river crossing. Hang on. All right, made that one. I think my boots are fairly water resistant too. I haven't actually plunged in. I think near the end, I'm actually just gonna plunge in and test them out. Except my shoelace just came untied, God damn it. Anyway, when you're packing your backpack, you wanna put the heavy stuff at the top, not at the bottom, in so much as you can. I mean, sometimes there's restrictions, of course, on how you're packing. All right, that was me attempting to tie a shoelace. I can't tie my shoes and podcast at the same time either. Hey, we're headed down the mountain. It's hot, it's sunny, so much for storm clouds, so much for lightning, so much for dying. I got to what I'm gonna call the trailhead because I went up to this, I went up to the place, it was at a peak, and there were some rocks and stuff. Well, rocky. And then the trail essentially is turned into a cow trail. And I followed the cow trail, and it started leading to 
a residential area, not like a suburbia residential area, but an area where there were multiple houses. Not right next to each other and all ugly in suburbia, thank God, but spaced out. So my theory is that that's a trail the people who live in those houses get, get, get. <laughs> That's a trail the people who live in those houses use to get to this trail, which they men may, you know, walk down, because from here you get to the road that goes up and down the pooter, and that's where you can get to the Mishawaka and all sorts of other stuff. So who knows? Maybe that's their back door to the trail. But I decided I had found the trailhead, now we're going back, also because I have a solstice party to go to today. Today is the solstice, my friends. I have a solstice party to go to, so i got to get back to the crib. Definitely going to take a shower. And then, might go get some fish and chips at the Wellington Grill, which is in Wellington, Colorado, and has amazingly delicious fish and chips. So I might stop off there on the way to the solstice party and get some delicious fish and chips, or I might not. I just have to see how it's going. And I think this anarchy moment had no purpose other than to tell you that I'm not dead yet. I'm not dead yet! And that I'm going down the mountain. Oh, river crossing. That was a nice easy one. Just stepped across. And, and yeah. I haven't been eaten by a bear. I haven't been struck by lightning. Ooh, yeah, dark clouds are actually rolling in again. But I'm already low enough that, well, then again, I have to go back anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But I'm already low enough that if lightning starts, I feel relatively safe. Back in the tree zone. All right, I'm gonna stop babbling about my adventures on the trail, and unless I think of any actual legitimate anarchist-related information that I wanna talk about, this might be the last edition of the Solstice Day Hiking Trail Anarchy Moment series. Who knows, I ain't making any guarantees, because there are no guarantees, regardless, how desperately you want your Lord and Savior, Hussein Obama, to guarantee that you'll be able to get an abortion paid for by the government, and no matter how badly you want Obama to guarantee you'll be able to get fertility assistance paid for by the government, no matter how desperately you want Hussein Obama to guarantee that you will get welfare, social security, food stamps, WIC, and everything else guaranteed by the government. There are no fucking guarantees. There are no fucking guarantees. There is only responsibility.